Welcome to FX Street. Kosh and I are going to be talking with you all about Ripple. But before we do that, I encourage you to head on over to YouTube, join our channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at FXS Crypto, Akash at Mangeko Zero, and myself at Just Analysis One. Okay, Ripple, 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 Ripple. So Ripple is, oh man, I tell you, this is this is one of the annoying things about the Ichimoku system is that rarely do you get these ideal bearish or bullish breakouts where they just kind of happen it's like and because because the last thing that generally has to happen and this happens i i don't know what the stats are maybe like eight out of ten nine out of ten times the final trigger is the chiku span which is the triggering mechanism for a lot of the um uh uh, uh, tr uh trades trade strategies within ichimoku the chiku span needs to be above the candlesticks, or the bodies of the candlesticks, and in open space. Um, so currently, Ripple is trading right here at what is that seventy point uh, seven eight six three or something. If it closes the daily chart right around here, then the next candle will open and it will confirm an ideal bullish Ichimoku breakout. So Ripple really needs to just kind of hold where it's at, and it will. It'll have the most bullish setup that it's had since you'd have to go back to um, March of last year. Huh. What are the odds? And also just to talk about the fractaliza fractalization of markets and how they operate. If you take a look at I had this written down in my notes that I wanted to go over last or earlier this week, but uh, where's the market profile? And how did you move? If you look at the chart here, you'll probably notice similar structure in this kind of activity, but just in a little bit tighter mode than what's over here. Big dip, big bowl, big bowl, spike, chop, consolidation, spike, chop, consolidation. Very similar structure uh, repeating over here. And in fact, I think if you do a fullback, you see this kind of repeat, don't you? Yeah, we do. Yep, you can see it. You can see that same structure repeat. So, uh, yeah, that's Ripple. Um, oh, crap. Weekly chart. Really struggling up against that 382. Uh, I really anticipate it having a pretty big spike up uh, very soon here. Um, uh, probably going to hear some news from Russia about things slowing down or Putin finding some excuse to make what he's really like okay in modern military history what putin has done is probably the equivalent of i i, I actually don't know i don't know what an analogy is but that guy has messed up <laughs> like horribly <laughs> and, and everybody thought that oh my gosh it's just a, a, a just a curb stop <laughs> just ridiculous how bad they've done, operated I feel so bad for those Russian soldiers, but not for Putin. I mean, that guy, that guy, you just skip the part where he's in the bunker and he shoots himself in the head. Mm -hmm. Reference to Hitler killing himself, for those of you who don't understand yeah. history. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but, did, but, but did Putin, I'm sorry for the interruption, but did no. Putin really do the, uh, the dumb thing? Because I feel like the, uh, the reaction from US and Europe is like a really dumb thing. And the way it's going to resolve is going to be really interesting to look at. Yeah, well, the, the sanctions especially is is really interesting. I want to see how the sanction thing plays out, especially since Russia is like a major uh, surplus holder of U.S. dollars, right? So, oh yeah, well, so if he does that, if he if he dumps his dollars, that's gonna be fine because there's actually there there's the, the Federal Reserve here in the states. They've been on the horn with countries around the globe trying to ensure them that there's going to be dollars that they're printing <laughs> for, for them 
very similar to what happened in uh, the COVID crash. The uh, uh, Federal Reserve was was not only dealing with panic at home, but panic with foreign currency reserves that people were, were worried about their dollars going. So, uh, but yeah. So what's what's stopping the U.S. from doing the same to some other country as well, right? Like, I mean, I get that Russia has instigated uh, this measure that the U.S. has taken, mm-hmm. but yeah. Besides the fact, right? Like that's besides the fact. Okay, my uh, my main uh, uh, reason for bringing this up is because if Russia dumps uh, U.S. dollars, right, uh, it's gonna go for gold, right? That's like the uh, that's that's a hard asset of choice. That's literally the next thing that they have to go to. So China also has the problem a lot of with it is they don't have a lot of places to spend their dollars, and the people that they would spend their dollars on. Are, mm-hmm. are nations that would be violating international sanctions and then they would be up at shite creek too. It also, exactly. So sanctions it's are kind of stupid because you have yeah. the EU still purchasing oil from Russia and then you have all the other EU nations <laughs> like, okay, yeah, sanctions are bad, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's get sanctions going. But then you have like some countries are like, yeah, but could we still sell them Gucci bags? Like, okay. Could we still sell yeah, them exactly. Italian property? Uh, yeah. What about the French Riviera? Is that still okay? Can we avoid that part of the saying? I mean, it's like anything that will, you know, that an oligarch could buy, they leave a lot of it open. But normal Russian people, yeah, goodbye, yeah, McDonald's. Fun. I mean, it's it's just which is which is unfortunately kind of the point of sanctions. But it's, uh, like Putin, he's he's he, wouldn't be surprised. If we hear something in the news, like he had a quote, I'm using my fingers for air quotes, a stroke <laughs> fell down the stairs. Uh, yeah, I doubt that. that. <laughs> he had cancer, um, car accident. <laughs> I really doubt that's going to happen to Putin. It could know. probably happen to the Ukraine's president or Elon Musk for that matter, but I don't think it's going to happen to Putin though. I think uh, that Ukraine, he's, he's, he's voided 12 assassination attempts or something. Pretty, yeah, but it, it's a it's pretty impressive how Ukraine's been able to fend off such right. a massive massive attack. I mean, what this isn't like I, satellites. You can clearly see the destruction that uh, Ukraine's put on on the Russian military machine. And yeah, hope like not my I, like I have family who are who are in the armed services. Um, if if anything that comes out of this, if Putin stays in power. I bet the corruption that is rampant in the Russian military will will a lot of it will come to an end because it's clear what what the shortcomings are and what, who's been skimming off the top and what the results of that are. Bad. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are we talking about? Oh. Uh, Ripple. Are, uh, you're going to see a massive bull run for, or like a spike for Ripple. Yeah, yeah, but, but really limited up to like 105 or 107. Um, you got the, the weekly Kijin Sen, and then you have Cinco Span B, which is the strongest level in the Ichimoku, Ich, Ichimoku system. Very flat. However, at the same time, the cloud appears very thin, and thin clouds represent weakness. And it, even though Cinco Span B is the strongest level of support and resistance, it's like the closer Senku Span A is it to it, it's like the weaker it gets and where it almost becomes a, uh, a moot as an area of resistance and support. So, yeah, if it, if it can get a weekly close or even a daily close above 84.5, 0.845, that, that should start a very quick move uh, towards that $1 region again. Um, as far as downside risks, they're... they're I mean that they're there, but I don't. I don't. Um, I mean, barring nuclear war, in which case none of this would matter. <laughs> that's the, that's the, yeah. It's the the joke is uh, nuclear war for the stock market is always a good thing because uh, if if there is threats of nuclear war, everything crashes and you buy the bottom, and uh, if it ends up nuclear war didn't happen then you just bought a really good uh, discount. And if it does happen, it won't matter. <laughs> so it's kind of dark humor, but yeah, that's what I see for Ripple. As far as downsides for Ripple, um, I see 
really limited to that 65 cent range that was kind of hovering just just below but broke out of back in uh, uh, early February. But uh, I'll pass it off to you, guys. That's all I see. Thank you, John. Right, so the bull flag for Ripple is holding up pretty good. Uh, ever since this breakout here on, excuse me, the 11th March, right? Uh, but what I see here is like a consolidation, the second place here, kind of similar to what happened uh, back in on 22nd Jan and early Feb. So I'm expecting a breakout from this to be extremely volatile and a move higher. So these are the levels I'm looking at, 0 0.85, 0 0.91, and $1, right? Uh, Although I'm pretty sure we might get away up to 1.01 to collect the liquidity roasting above these equal highs formed on 30th November and 23rd December, right? Another thing is I believe this consolidation is going to continue for another day or two, I believe. And the reason for that is the Bollinger Band width indicator, which is often used to mark the lowest point in volatility. So if you look at this uh, with the, the price action, you can see back here, when volatility hit a lowest point, excuse me, let's adjust this. Right, so volatility hit the lowest point here at 0 0.1, and after that, the price saw mass volatility. Uh, I do want to point out that this indicator does not give you the direction. It only mentions, it only indicates that the volatility is at its lowest point and the reversal is likely. This reversal here indicates that you are going to see a massive surge in volatility for the price, regardless of the direction. And for now, price is heading back to that 0 0.1 level here. So with this in mind, although there's a, there's a good chance price, uh, the, the the BBW, the ball is a bandwidth indicator could reverse from here. Uh, I'm expecting it to head down to 0 0.1, which if we get this scenario, then, uh, then I'm expecting a massive move directly to $1. So that's my take on uh, Ripple, the upside cap at $1. As for the downside, you have this uh, forward demand zone here. And if you get like a daily close below 0 0.68, uh, this demand zone will be invalidated. Obviously, the, the bull flag will also be invalidated, in which case the purple price is open to move down like an 8% where we are going to approach the edge demand zone. And the buyers can give the uptrend another try. So this is an unlikely scenario. So to sum it up, upside cap at $1, downside cap at 0 0.54. So that concludes my analysis. All right. And uh, thank you, Akash, and thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, if you're still listening, for sticking through our little bit of off-topic but on-topic. Well, it is on-topic because it's the pretty much the major existential uh, uh, thing that is going to affect risk on markets is uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So uh, everybody yeah. have a great weekend, and we will talk with you again over Ripple next week. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.